I am Dr. Shakti Srub Samantre. I am an advocate in the Delhi High Court and I am an honorary visiting faculty of the SBG Law College, Katak, Sri Biswaguru Law College, Katak. I am here to present to you before a topic which has assumed a serious demographic threat in our country and it is as follows. So unsurmountable roadblocks in implementation of the law against sex selective abortion, female feticide posing challenge to gender equity in India. Friends, let's first see the Indian scenario. The Indian scenario, close study of happenings with regard to gender equity status during prehistoric and mythological era clearly reveals the women through ages were recognized as most respected members in Indian communities as per descriptions in the scripts of major religions followed by people in India, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians, women in society are given the position of the highest prestige and dignity. A clear decline in the female sex ratio from 0 to 6 years observed from 2001 census data in India alerted all concerned to understand the root cause of the decline. Careful data analysis pointed to sex selective abortion of female fetus on a large scale, the principal contributor. Alarming decline in child sex ratio in India. Friends, let's have a look at these two graphs. In the, from the first graph, we can see that it is a graph for a 100-year period from 1901 to 2001. We see the sex ratio in India over the years, which is declining. So, but at two periods, mainly 1971 and 1991, it is remaining constant. But the general, but the general inference which one can draw from this graph is that the sex ratio is on the decline subject to certain fluctuations. In the next figure, in the next graph, we compare the child sex ratio and the overall sex ratio in India. So far as the overall sex ratio in India is concerned, it is say colored in pink, the pink bars. Both these are bar diagrams for confirmation, ladies and gentlemen. The, the pink colored bar diagrams are the overall sex ratio in India which is fluctuating whereas the blue colored bar diagrams they represent the child sex ratio in India which is continuously on the decline from 1951 to 2001. It is over a 50 year period. An emerging demographic catastrophe in recent decades, female feticide has emerged as a serious demographic threat in northwestern states in India, slowly spreading to other states. So developed Indian states like Kerala have good child sex ratios 0 to 6 years, an important index of overall development. Dwindling child sex ratio is the outcome of female feticide. Practice of eliminating girl children is strongly influenced by sun preference and age-old practice in India. Demographic balance and declining child sex ratio are intimately related. Misuse of medical ultrasound diagnostic facility is the leading cause for the decline in the child sex ratio from 0 to 6 years. My 5 years 2006 to 2011 research addressed the problem of continuing female feticide in a number of northwestern that is affluent states, particularly Union Territory of Delhi. As per the 2011 census, Delhi in the southwest district of Delhi, the child sex ratio was 836 females for 1,000 males. Sun preference, a transnational phenomenon. Deeply positioned as age-old community mindset, it serves as an irresistible stimulus to eliminate girl children until a male child is born in the family. Easy access to medical ultrasound diagnostic facility has greatly facilitated the job. Several research studies have revealed sun preference across all communities in India, Southeast Asia and European nations. 
sun preference continued. As per my observation in Thailand in 2006 December, sure. during a focus group discussion with some highly educated young Thai mothers working abroad, sun preference was still prevalent in some parts of rural Thailand. English medieval rule favored the eldest son for all the inheritance purposes to the exclusion of the rest of the children in the family. As per Mr. Victor Tunkel, Secretary General, Selden Society School of Law, Queen Mary University, London, with whom I discussed the issue in London in September 2007. During my study visit to University of Paris to Pantheon, France in 2007, I interacted with undergraduate and postgraduate law students who mentioned that sex-selective abortion is not prevalent in France. Methodology adopted. Quantitative data was generated by conducting a survey on a sample of total 243, male 119 and female 124 contacted at South Delhi habitations using simple random technique and meticulously designed questionnaire. This was my proposed plan of action of study. In Delhi, I selected one district by purposive sampling. I chose the southwest district of Delhi because it is one of the most prosperous districts of Delhi. The people have a high standard of living and the means of education of the children of these families is also very high. So I selected one district by purposive sampling. From this one district, I selected three sub-districts by simple random technique. From the three sub-districts, I selected three wards by random sampling. Ward number one, ward number two, ward number three. But the total population that is boys and girls in these three wards came out to be 243. The yellow colored areas represent the slum areas, the green colored areas represent the middle class areas, and the red colored areas represent the posh areas. This excludes the medical professionals and implementers of PC and PNDT Act. Each strata with equal representation of men and women has been given maybe with slight fluctuations. Data processing and analysis. Used SPSS version 12 package with the help of statistical expert from National Institute of Health and Family Welfare Department of Social Science. The presentation of the critical findings are as follows. Reasons for preferring sons. So women's reasons top priority for preferring son, 90% women in Delhi said sons extend support in old age. Men's reasons top priority for preferring sons, 89% said they continue the family name. Respondents opinion about female feticide that is sex selective abortion, most couples during the first pregnancy want male child and opt for sex selective abortion if sex of the fetus is known as female, 84% of them. The next, easy access to sex detection facility prompts the pregnant woman to go for sex selective abortion, 82.7% of them. Then, availability of ultrasound facility within easy reach facilitates sex selective abortion, 87.2% of them. Now, the respondent's perception about ultrasound so far as sex selective abortion is concerned. Ultrasound is used mostly for sex detection during early pregnancy. This is something which is quite untrue because the main function of the ultrasound is to give us more information or to provide us more information regarding the health of the mother and the health of the child. The number of persons who are saying no are 80.7% whereas the number of persons sorry the number of persons who are saying yes are 80.7 percent and the number of persons who are saying no are 19.3 percent it's possible to know the sex of the fetus at the early stage of pregnancy with the help of ultrasound number of persons who are saying yes are 72.4 percent and number of persons who are no are saying 27.6 percent so this is the right perception Next, newly married couples don't bother whether first child is male or female. Number of persons saying no are 81.5% and number of persons saying yes are 18.5%. So this is also a correct perception. Newly married couples choice on the sex of the first child. Male child welcome, it constitutes 67.7%. 
neutral attitude only 14% and any sex welcome only 19%. If so the, the previous was a pie diagram, now this is a sliced pie diagram. If the discrimination against women in the society is eliminated, the sex selective abortion that is female feticide would be controlled automatically. The number of persons who said yes are 74%. The number of persons who said no are 12% and the number of persons who can't say anything are 14%. Conclusion. Sustained and quality interactions with religious, locally influential persons and community leaders willing to cooperate in efforts to prevent female feticide by sustainably persuading married couples to give equal importance to children of both sexes to be actively followed up at district levels under the leadership of district administrator. Because of complex and deep-rooted mindset in the community to have a male child, there is a need to create a multi-ministerial national advisory council with secretary-level representatives from ministries of health, HRD, human resource development, social justice and empowerment, panchayati raj, rural development, youth affairs, law, national commission for women and registrar general of India, to meet at least once in a year to take stock of the national scenario and recommend appropriate steps to contain the menace of female feticide and promote the welfare of girl children in the country. I thank you all for your patient hearing and I also thank the concerned the chairpersons for the patient hearing, Sir Professor Lee for the patient hearing and for, Pro, and for Wu Li King for their patient hearing. And now I open the house for 